Hey guys, so for those of you who know my channel, you know that I'm a Linux guy through and through. Uh, but the thing is, sometimes you just have to use Windows. And uh, no, I haven't reformatted my Void Linux machine once again. This is actually another completely different computer. So this is my work computer, actually. And in case you don't know, so I actually found a full-time job as an IT analyst. And uh, really working with IT essentially means that uh, you have to know Windows. Now, at the bare minimum, you need to understand how it works, but more likely than not, you also need to uh, use it. So this is what I have here. I have a Windows box here, and um, it's a relatively okay computer again. Um, I use some, there are some Windows specific applications that I use. Uh, so, for example, if you if any of you work in internet service providers, you may know what some of these programs are. So, for example, this is for managing FTDH type ONUs uh, for kind of uh, optical networks. So, I'm, I won't get into all the details, but anyway, this is what I'm working with. And uh, you guys know that I'm a CLI nerd. So, really, the first attempt at a CLI that Windows has is CMD. So, if you execute this, you get this command prompt, so the, ba uh, the black um, screen where you type stuff. Now, this is really terrible because first things first, you don't have uh, tab completion. So, if I press tab here, I actually am tabbing, I am not actually completing. And uh, also, the commands are not really. You, you can only run single commands, so redirection doesn't work as you intend. Now, there are solutions to this, and uh, the first the first of which is Sigwin. So, uh, Sigwin is essentially a bash layer that you put on top of CMD, and you essentially ga uh, gain all of the functionalities of bash, such as redirection and also Unix-like commands, such as grep and awk and all these kinds of stuff. Now. Uh, you also have a, a few alternatives. So, for example, if especially if you work with remote machines like uh, servers and stuff, routers, you usually have Putty, and uh, Putty is essentially a session manager for Telnet and uh, SSH and also serial connections. Now, I found the best uh, application which essentially replaces uh, not only the Sigwin, uh, the Sigwin terminal, but also the essentially the remote session management with Mobile Xterm which is actually what I'm talking about here. So this is the site if you want to take a look again, uh, mobaextern.mobatech.net. And since we're on Windows, we have to download it. So you go here and you download the executable. I'm not going to explain to you how to install stuff on Windows. And uh, the thing is you have several cool functionalities that I always wish I had on Windows, such as again, I have a, an X server. So this is based on Xorg again. And I also have, for example, display forwarding and also remote desktops. So if I have a remote Windows server or a remote Linux server with a desktop installed, I can actually uh, run essentially uh, the, either an RDP or a VNC, so session towards them. Uh, I also I, I am also allowed to essentially save, so save sessions. You know, if I have an SSH session that I always open towards, let's say, the main uh, the the router on my uh, router on my home network or maybe to a remote server then i can use this and uh, again this comes with sigwin pre-installed so i have a bash shell inside of mobile extern now let's open it and take a look around then shall we so if i just run this this is what it looks like if you uh upon boot and uh, this is essentially again all this is going to contain here on the left all of your sessions and you also have some tools and some macros. I haven't played too much with macros, but I'll probably do a video on them if you guys are interested enough. And the uh, tools again are just games and also some other things. So for example, you actually have a package manager and this package manager is going to integrate with your bash shell. So you can actually install Unix programs with this package manager. Just give me a second. And uh, the repository is kind of slow, so I, I have a hard time updating. Uh, my 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 packages for MOBA, but it's a it's a functionality if you want to. So this is what it looks like, and you have kind of a list, so where you can filter for package names. You have, for example, make, and you also have a te uh, tech, so LaTeX kind of packages and all these kinds of stuff. Now, the most interesting and the, essentially the meat of this uh, application is the session management. So let's say that I want to open a new session. I can go to this button and then I can choose between the different session types. So for example, I have SSH and here I can input an IP address. So for example, 192.115, uh, whatever. 
and then I can specify a username that I'm going to use upon SSHing to that machine. I can also change the port number, and then I also have some settings that uh, pertain essentially to the pad variable, the terminal type, again, some uh, more advanced stuff. So I can even do X X11 forwarding, if you know what that is. Now, I also have Telnet sessions, so they work the same as with SSH. Again, the protocol is different, but it's essentially the same thing. Additionally, additionally, you also have RDP and VNC, so which are for, again, remote desktops. So this is for Windows. And uh, again, you can also set XMDCP. So this is for connecting to X servers. FTP and SFTP, you can use them to transfer files. Again, the, parameter, the parameters are the same, so you're going to give it an IP address and then the username of your SFTP service. This replaces PuTTY in the sense that it also allows you to do serial connections. So if I had a serial, a serial cable attached to my computer connected to the console port of a router, for example, I could choose the essentially the serial port and then set the bold rate, which is this. And uh, the most interesting is that this comes with uh, some built-in shells. So for example, I mentioned that you could use Sigwin to get a bash layer. So this is what uh, this function does. So if I choose a terminal shell, I can actually actually have one set up here. So this is a bash shell and notice that this has power power line. So this is built in. I haven't configured any of this. And uh, it also has Tmux. Now, I myself decided that I want Tmux on this uh, on this window. So if you notice, I can go to edit this session. And then if I go to the advanced shell settings, I actually can run Tmux whenever I start my session. And this way I get this bar down here and I can use regular tmux commands if I want. So this is one of the local sessions that we can we can cover. Let me just bring in a new one. I also have so regular CMD shells. So again, this is not uh, this is the same uh, shell that you would use in a command prompt. So you don't have the auto completion, for example. Notice that I'm pressing tab and nothing's happening. Uh, I can do the regular command uh, CMD type stuff. So I can do ping, for example, or ipconfig. Uh, I can print the ARP table, for example. And uh, really, for CMD, this is all there is to it. But you also have another type of local session, and this is a PowerShell session. And this is very nice. Because if you work in IT, you most likely use PowerShell a lot. It's essentially the equivalent of Bash. So it's a, it's a scripting language that you can use on Windows platform and it, it integrates very well with the Active Directory and all this kind of stuff. So if you know how to use it again, this is probably going to be very useful if you want to try out some functions or write some short little scripts. And this can also uh, call, uh, call programs that are installed on your machine. So I can even start Vim from a PowerShell session as if I were using Bash, for example. Since Vim is installed on this machine, I can actually uh, locally run Vim so I'll notice that if I open, open Bash here, I can also open Vim. And uh, this Bash is actually, this Sigwin shell is actually mounting my home directory for Windows. So I can actually manipulate the files that are on my system in a Unix-like manner. <clears throat> and uh, this, is, this is most of what there is to it when it comes to local shell. So you actually have, a, you also have a WSL. So this is the Windows subsystem for Linux. And uh, this essentially lets you run native Linux distributions again. So you can download Ubuntu, for example, from the Windows Store and you can run it inside of your uh, Windows installation. Now there's other stuff that you can do with it. So I mentioned briefly the package manager. You also have so tunneling stuff. And you can even generate SSH key. So this is useful if you work with uh, with uh, asymmetric cryptography on your servers. For example, if you have uh, if you need a public and a private key pair on your machine in order to access a certain server. And uh, this is a, this is also very useful if you're a system admin, for example, doing network scanning and port scanning. So these are all features that you want most likely to use on a day to day basis if you're troubleshooting this kind of stuff. I can also do splits, so, and uh, let's show this off. So this is some nice splits. There's even a macro that allows you to kind of type in two windows at the same time. So if you want to deploy a specific uh, command around uh, several different machines, you can do this with a single click. So by typing in a single window and then repeating on all the other windows.
this is more advanced, but still. And uh, finally, you can kind of customize it. So if you go to the configuration, you can customize, for example, the background. So my background for my terminal is dark, and this is what defines it. I'm not going to change it because it, it actually requires a restart, but do know that you can change this, you can change the fonts, the char set, for example, if you're not using uni Unicode, you can use other kind of uh, character sets. And uh, you can also change the theme, so this is going to change the color of the windows and the tabs. I find this very, bar uh, very bright, so I'll just turn it down to the dark theme. You can also so you can you can manipulate again the kind of items that you see here on top. Uh, a part of it is a part of this video is also just to show off what exists. So if you guys are interested, you can obviously uh, install the program if you have a Windows machine and just play around with it. That's how I learned most of the applications that I cover anyway. So this should give you a very nice head start, I would say, in how to use Mobile Xterm. And I hope any of you has found this useful. And I'll see you guys next time. Bye bye.